God has commissioned Pastor Vera or Robert to preach the word of faith, ushering people into the life of limitless abundance. Get ready for an encounter that will enable you to obtain all of God's blessings for your life. Can we put our hands together for... Uh, is that the best you can do? The first forum for 2019? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we are just grateful for your love. Love that is so, so excess. Beyond human comprehension. No one can fathom the depth of your love. Lord, we want to thank you today for your amazing love that has kept us till this time. Your amazing love that saved us, cleansed us, made us sons of the kingdom of God. Father, even as we begin the forum for 2019, we want to commend every single month into your hands. We want to ask that each month will be unique. Each month you'll be bringing forth your wisdom. Each month, God, you'll be helping us, God, with your direction. Each month, oh God, let it be under the, the control of the Holy Ghost. That even tonight, God, as many as have come and those that are coming, Father God, speak in our lives. Speak in our lives. Every married person here today, God, let them receive fresh instruction for their lives. Father, every single one, God, let them receive fresh direction for their future. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. If you believe that this year you are going to be getting wisdom at the forum, can you clap your hands and give God praise? in the house of god hallelujah god bless you please before you sit down don't be too quick to sit down help me just go to about two three people tell them i'm really glad you're here tonight i believe this is somebody's year i said i believe this is somebody's year in the name of jesus so i really want to welcome every one of you tonight for the first forum for 2019 we thank God for the vision that the Lord gave to begin the forum for single and married people. When the forum started, it was actually for just single people. But later, the Spirit of God began to move in our hearts to also include the married people. And so, we included the married people. And we thank God for marriages that have been helped. But as we were praying in December, preparing for the year 2019... The Lord began to show us again that there's something we need to do beyond um, what we are doing, especially for the married couples. And so this year, starting from next quarter, we are having a special course for only married people. Okay, the flyers are going to be made available. And, but let me explain how it will run. Because God showed us the intensity of attack against marriages. I mean, two young people in love, they get married and before you know it, they are already tired of the marriage. And we see the hand of the devil in all of this. And the Lord began to show us that there needs to be an intensive teaching, intensive training, a boot camp, if you like, for married couples. And it's actually going to be a course of instruction, like a Bible school. But it's going to be running for one quarter. So when we take off in the second quarter that's next um starting in january from March, april in april it will be one weekend in a month for that whole quarter so that's three weekends that the couples will come in here it's not an open forum like this so for any couple to start they must register they will start the course nobody can come in may if they didn't do april so if you didn't register at the beginning even if it's two couples that register in april we we'll take those two couples through the course like a bible school only on marriage on how to run their marriage how to make their marriage work and by the end of that quarter they are done then we will skip a quarter the last quarter of the year we'll do it again for new couples if the first couple who attended want to attend again they'll be free to attend but we see the onslaught of the devil against marriages 
And the Lord is saying, I put the word in your mouth to do something about it. Why keep the word in your stomach? You go ahead and do something about it. And so we'll be doing that and we're trusting the Holy Spirit will help us in the name of Jesus. And um, I believe that there is nothing that God cannot do. There's nothing he cannot turn around. There's no situation that he cannot change. And I believe that every marriage that is going to be um, on that, that course of instruction is going to be saved and helped in Jesus' name. All right, so tonight in the time available to me, I'm talking about how to build a word-centered relationship. And I'm talking to both married and single people. I would like to start, the Lord directed my attention to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And we're going to start reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 5 verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Of course, you know, Jesus created all things. So, of course, he knew about acoustics. And he knew that if he wanted to talk to a crowd of people, the best bet would be to be in the sheep and talk, and the wind will carry the words to the people. So, that was what he did that day. Verse 4. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. May the Lord increase his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Now, so we have this situation where Peter was a professional fisherman and they had been fishing. They've done all that their training enabled them to do. They worked hard. They toiled through the night. Despite their best efforts, the Bible says all night they toiled and yet they caught nothing. Sometimes you see some people who say, oh, I'm an expert when it comes to relationship." I'm an expert when it comes to how to deal with uh, human beings. But somehow they get into their own relationship and they toil and toil and it's not working. These are people that can sit another married couple down and cancel them. And the counsel will be like God speaking. And yet they find their own relationships not working. Or even a single person, you know how to advise another single person and you'll be spot on. And it will just be exact. But somehow when it comes to your own issue, you don't know why it's not working the way it should. That's the situation these disciples found themselves. Okay, they were not disciples at that time. These guys found themselves, toiled all night, they caught nothing. Jesus came along. And you remember that Jesus is the word of God. Amen. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus came along and he said, let me use your boat. He used the boat and then he says, now launch out into the deep and you get a great catch and they said master we don't understand what you are saying we have toiled all night we have done our very best but they were smart they said nevertheless are thy word i'm sure they were listening to jesus as he was preaching as he was preaching and they knew that this person who has been teaching all of these principles all of this time is absolutely trustworthy we can trust his word we have toiled all night but nevertheless are thy word we will try again and they did try and they caught a great multitude of fish now please listen to me i want you to understand that for you to have a word-centered relationship you have to do like these disciples i've tried my very best efforts but now nevertheless at thy word in other words we are going to try one more time on the basis of your word we are going to give it our best shot based on what you are saying to us and i have never seen the word of god fail amen i have never seen the word of god fail it says so is my word when it goes forth it must produce the reason why it was sent 
it must deliver every time the word of God is sent. Nevertheless, at thy word. Now, to build a word-centered relationship, you must begin from that premise. Lord, it's going to be in my life, nevertheless, at thy word. I want to base the whole of my life on nevertheless at thy word. That is to say, it is not only when it deals with relationship. The whole of my life has to be nevertheless at thy word. If you are going to take out other areas of your life, and you are going to say, okay, when it comes to my business, not at thy word. When it comes to this area, my career, not at thy word. But relationship at thy word. It doesn't work. You cannot pick and choose. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Oh, are you here? Can you hear me? Is my, are my words clear? So you cannot pick and choose. And say, this is the area I want. Okay, this relationship matter, Lord, is a very serious... I, I, there's nothing I can do about this, so I'm depending on you. Okay, so at your word. But this area that I know what to do by myself, not at thy word. If you are going to do like that, it's not going to work. You are going to agree that every area of your life, nevertheless, at thy word. And when you do that, the only result, the resultant effect of that is that there will be a great catch. I see you getting a great catch. Oh, single sisters should say a good amen. Because I see you getting a great catch this year. Yeah? Yeah. That's the prophecy and it will come to pass. Praise God. I said praise God. Nevertheless, at thy word. That's the premise on which we are going to begin. I'm not going to run my life on my own terms and then just pick the issue of marriage. That's where I want God to work for me. No, it's going to be every area of your life. Now, I want us to turn in our Bibles as well to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19 verse 11. Of course, they came to ask Jesus about divorce. And Jesus told them that divorce is not part of the plan. But we are not dealing with divorce today. I just want to go to verse 11. Media, give me um, a message translation. Message translation. Jesus said, because the, the disciples, when Jesus explained marriage and that there's no possibility of divorce, as far as the standard of God is concerned, the disciples said, if that is the case, then it is, not, it is good for a man not to marry. He could go better make an unmarry. So Jesus started answering. He said, but Jesus said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. Not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. Not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. Everybody say it. Not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. Help me ask your neighbor, are you mature enough to live a married life? What did they say? Somebody giggled. <laughs> eh? <laughs> he said no. Now, marriage requires a certain aptitude and grace. Marriage requires a certain aptitude and grace. Now, the Bible says that the grace of God comes by the word of God. Please, I'm going somewhere. The grace of God comes by the word of God. He said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain aptitude and grace. That maturity that makes a person live a successful married life only comes by grace. And grace is contacted by the word of God. In other words, the only solid ground on which you can have a blissful marital destiny is for you to make up your mind from the word go that my marriage my relationship is going to be word centered it's going to be squarely centered on the word of god not everyone can live a married life you can speak in tongues that doesn't mean you are mature for marriage you can cast out demons it doesn't mean you are mature for marriage you can do great signs and wonders. That doesn't mean you are mature for marriage. 
Not everyone is mature for marriage. Now, that is say, to say that if you want to live a solid, blissful, marital life, one of the things that you must do is to mature. And that maturity is not just a function of age. There are foolish old men. I hope you know that. There are foolish old women. Am I right on that? Yeah? A foolish old man is just a foolish young man who never got wise till he became old. Eh? He was a foolish young man and he grew to become a foolish old man. A foolish young woman who grew to become a foolish old woman. Okay? Now, so if I want to live a solid married life, I must mature. Son of age alone. Elihu, the friend, one of the friends, the small friends of Job, said something. He said, great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand wisdom. He said, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. What gives him understanding? The inspiration of the Almighty. Now I hear Apostle Paul speaking, all scripture is inspired of God. So when he says it's the inspiration of God that gives him understanding, it's not as if the, 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 the God will just come and inspire him. God brings that inspiration via the instrument of his word. Amen. So when I don't want to be foolish in my relationship, I don't want to be foolish in my marriage, what needs to happen is that I must receive inspiration. And that inspiration comes out of the word of God. So you make up your mind that I am going to live a solid word-based relationship. Praise God. When I was growing up, <laughs> I grew up in a Baptist home. My parents were serious. In my home, we had one writing like this on the wall frame. I've been looking for that thing. Please, if anybody know where I can find it, let me know. It's a, it was just a beautiful war frame. And what was written on it? Christ is the head of this house. The unseen guest at every meal. The silent listener to every conversation. Has anybody seen that thing at all? Anybody? Uh, anybody who has seen it, you must be connected to Baptist. It's a wonderful thing. If I find it, I will put it everywhere. Because it so affected me when I was growing up. My father had it there. Right in the sitting room. And you know, even if I wasn't in the sitting room, there was a kind of awe and fear. Anytime I wanted to step to do something, I remember Christ is the unseen guest at every meal. He's the silent listener to every conversation. So somehow... Even though I wasn't yet born again, my life was ordered by that word. Knowing that this home is a Christ-centered home and I cannot deviate too far away from what my parents were teaching me and how they were raising me. Now, to build a Christ-centered relationship, I want to share about 10 things very quickly with you. Number one. Number one. Number one, only a word-centered relationship can experience true love. Only a word-centered relationship can experience true love. There are people who get married and they are wondering why they are already disgusted, busted, and tired of the marriage. I want you to know that many times, People get married on the basis of feelings. The way they felt. How their heart skipped a beat when the guy was coming or the girl was coming. And they got married on the basis of that. After the marriage, they found out that that emotion had dissipated. It was gone. Flew through the window. That chiki chiki they used to feel was gone. And now it's like, I don't love him anymore the way I used to. You know why they say that? Is that when they were entering that relationship, they entered the relationship on the basis of emotions. 
It is only a word-centered relationship that can experience true love. How do I mean? It is only a relationship where you have decided that this relationship will be word-centered that you can take a passage of scripture like 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that talks about love. Love is kind. And you are checking yourself. Am I kind to this guy? Am I kind to my husband? Am I kind to my wife? Love is patient. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love. So any person who has not made up his mind, nevertheless at thy word, cannot practice a word-based relationship. Because you are checking, and you are checking your reaction to your partner. How you are just so unkind in the words you are speaking. How you are not patient at all. How you... You get easily, the Bible says love is not easily irritated. So please listen to me, even those of you that are not yet married. You will make up your mind. Because marriage is a very long journey. Oh, mine is almost 30 years. So it's a long, long, I've been married many more years than I've been single. So you can understand that it's a long journey. I still have many years ahead of me. Amen. Help me say amen now. Uh, you don't want me to have many more years in the future. I mean, won't make it end now. Praise God. I said, praise God. So that is to say, the time you are going to be spending married is going to be a lot of years. And if you have not set your sail that I want to live and have a world-centered marriage, a world-centered relationship, it is not going to be a pleasant journey. Nevertheless, at thy word. So you are checking. You are checking. This vex, I'm vexing. And for three days, I've not talked to my partner. Is it based on the word? Am I doing the word? Am I doing the word? That's what makes a marriage work. A marriage that is based on the word of God is a marriage that will work. Where true love is experienced. Number two. A word-centered relationship, you must be born again. That's a given. You must be born again. You cannot practice the principles of God's word outside of the kingdom of God. I'd like to read 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. Look at what it says. He said there are some people who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. From such turn away. Please listen to me. If you are going to have a word-centered relationship, you must make sure that you are born again. You, are, you don't just have a form of godliness and you deny the power. How does somebody deny the power and having a form of godliness? It is when you say, yes, I believe that Jesus died. I believe that he's the son of God. I believe that he is my savior. And yet, the outworking of the life of Christ is not visible in your life. Those are people who have a form of godliness but deny the power of godliness. There is a power of godliness that makes a man live above the power of sin. It's called the power of godliness. But there are some people who have a form of godliness. They go to church. They do stuff in church. But that exhibition of the God life is missing. So you must be born again. You must have accepted and received Christ as your Lord. And you don't just have a form of godliness. And that means that whoever you are going to get into relationship with must also be of the same kind. In other words, you cannot get into relationship with somebody who just has a form of godliness without the power of godliness. If you want a word-centered relationship, you must have both the form and power of godliness. And the person you want to enter a relationship with must have both the form and power of godliness. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? You are awfully quiet this evening. Is it, is it settling well? Are you getting it well? So, that is to say, I cannot just jump and say, yes, I want a word-centered relationship and I have not given the word 
a place in my life. That is, I have not made Jesus the Lord of my life. That's number two. You must be born again. Jesus must be the Lord of your life. And this is the beginning of the year 2019. If you have been carrying a form of godliness, you are just carrying religion up and down. But that very life of Christ has not found full expression in your life. You are going to start from this very January to say, Lord, I don't just want to be carrying uh, religion up and down. I want true godliness. You must be born again. Number three. Number three. You must decide to live a word-centered life. We are not talking of your relationship yet. You as a, an individual, you make up your mind that my life is going to be word-centered. How can my life be word-centered if I don't have the word? How can my own life be word-centered if I don't have the word? I got a serious revelation this evening when they were acting. What was that revelation, Pastor Hope? Test our spirits. Did you get the revelation? I mean, if you don't have the word of God, somebody can just pick a scripture, twist it, and make it say something else. In my Sunday school this morning, my Sunday school teacher was teaching us that somebody said, you know, you, um, you love God, I love God. You are holy, I'm holy. So the Bible says uh, you can have a holy kiss. I mean, people can just pick the Bible and use it to say anything they like to say. So you are going to make up your mind that, see, I am going to actively allow the word of God full access in my life. Colossians 3.16. Colossians 3.16. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. It said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Is that what it says? So let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord now one of the things about the word of god is that it produces a harvest of joy the word of god produces a harvest of joy he said let the word of christ dwell in you richly that is to say i cannot have a word-centered relationship if i don't have the word in me hello so please, one of the things you will make up your mind this year, I am going to do everything to receive God's word. Fill my life with the word of God. Fill my life with the word of God. I was saying to them this morning, uh, uh, after I was on the school, that see, after I got saved, I was, I was a young, I got saved at the age of 20. When I got born again, I, I was in church all my life. I even sang in the choir, I wasn't saved. Until I was 20, I got born again. Receive Christ. The Messiah came into my life. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. Now, from that 20 till 21, one year, I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I was doing all night studying the Bible. I was doing all night studying the Bible. I just wanted, I wanted this thing. I wanted to know God. I wanted the reality of it. Please, let me tell you something. You cannot exercise faith above the word of God that you know. You cannot exercise faith above the word of God that you have. You cannot live above the effectiveness of God's word in your heart and in your life. And the Lord spoke to me in those early days. He says, see, Vera, there are many things people say about me. That's about Christ. But I want you to discover Jesus for yourself. Please listen. If you see that we've been married almost 30 years and we've raised four children by the grace of God and the children are doing well by God's grace, it's a harvest of the word of God. It's a harvest of the word of God. Ken Hagen used to say something. He said there were times that when he was pastoring that he looked at some members of the church and he could predict which children will not do well in the church. And now that I'm pastoring, I'm also watching and somehow I'm predicting some children that may not do well. He said, I didn't do that prediction based on any spiritual gifts. It was just by observing the families. 
just by observing. Those who were taking the word of God seriously and they were serious about impacting those values to their children. I, I look at some families, I, I don't know what they are thinking. Eh? You, you have a young daughter, three years, four years, and then you, 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 you are dressing her to church with open back to Hayash, like this. You are, you, you are wearing bomb shorts and you think you are being smart. <laughs> I mean, you cannot train a child the way it should go. And then when the child becomes a teenager and wants to do those things, you say that's not the way to go. Is that what the Bible says? No. So what I'm sharing with you today is not just for your relationship to get married or even your relationship after you get married. Even the effectiveness of the children that you are going to raise is based on the word. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In other words, in the different areas of your life. Wisdom for marriage, wisdom for finance, wisdom in every area of your life. The word of God. You know why some people's marriages and their relationships will not work? They didn't receive wisdom for finance. They have no wisdom whatsoever. I sit down with some people, I'm like... Which planet did you grow up in? No, no, no wisdom. The wisdom pipe is blocked. No wisdom for simple things. How can you, a small girl, you are earning just 20K, you want to buy with one of 40K? Which planet did you arrive from? Your wisdom pipe is getting blocked. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So, in order not to belabor that point, I want to beg you this year, get out your Bible. You know this is the first forum for the year. Get out your personal Bible. Yesterday I went looking for a new Bible because I've used this one only a year or so, right? About a year plus I've used this Bible. But it's all, you can see it, it's, it's, it's gone. Pages are loose. I'm telling you, sometimes I'm, I'm preaching the page fly. I'll catch my page. I'll put it so that they don't know that it's from a loose page. Um, you know? <laughs> Forgive me. Now, let me tell you something. I am not a fool for spending so many hours reading the Bible. Do I look like a foolish person? I know that this is the embodiment of wisdom. I sit down hours and I'm studying the Bible. You can't tell me that I have nothing else to do. If it's to watch television, I have television visions in my house. But I switch off that thing. I sit down and I'm studying. Because I'm saying to myself, I am entering into 2019, for example, is an uncharted course. It's uncharted waters. I've never been to 2019 before. But I serve a God who knows 2019. Amen. And I'm not just going to say because my bishop spoke over 2019 for me, that's enough. I need to receive word that will carry me through. Am I making sense to you? Now, I want you to also open in your Bibles. Please turn your Bibles and go to Psalm. Psalm 119 verse 128. Psalm 119, 128. Psalm 119 verse 128. If you have time, read the whole of Psalm 119. It's powerful. Okay, it says, Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts, Concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. Please, listen. You cannot have a word-centered relationship until you agree like David. To say, God, I agree that all your precepts concerning everything is correct. Please put it up for us in good news. Good news. So, I follow all your instructions. I, I hate all wrong ways. NLT. 
Each of your commandments is right. That is why I hate every false way. See, if you are going to live a word-centered life, you will agree that every single thing that God has said concerning everything is the correct thing. Every other one is lying. Just like uh, the drama we watched. This guy already knew the path of God. Flee fornication. He already knew the path God wanted him to take. But a friend just came in with a false way. Eh? Is this how you will do it? Are you a mugu? And all that. And he succumbed. Did it end well? Every other way outside of the word of God is a false way. It leads to dead ends. Okay? So number what now? Number four. Number four. Understand that Jesus is the word. If you are going to live a, have a word-centered relationship, you must understand that Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. So that means that if Jesus is the word and I want a word-centered relationship, what I need to ask in every situation that confronts me is what would Jesus do? Jesus is the word. So what would Jesus do in every situation? We call it WWJD. In every situation, what would Jesus do? Husband and wife, you are having a time of intense fellowship. Do you know the time of intense fellowship? Oh, single people don't know intense fellowship. A time of intense fellowship. This one is talking. This one wants to talk back. This one is talking. This one wants to reply. That's intense fellowship. All of a sudden, you want a word-centered marriage? You ask yourself, WWJD, what would Jesus do in this situation? You do as he, do, he does. You are single and you are in the center of an issue. Question is, what would Jesus do? So if you want a word-centered relationship, everything that concerns your relationship, the question would be, what would Jesus do? Because Jesus is the word. What would Jesus do? The next number. The, the next number. What number is that? Number five. Remember that Christ's love for you is the ultimate. Christ's love for you is the ultimate. You do not seek fulfillment in how anyone makes you feel. Remember that Christ's love for you is the ultimate. You do not seek fulfillment in how anyone makes you feel. Please listen. If you are going to have a word-centered relationship, I want you to not look to any human being to make you feel complete please listen single people listen it is so sad when i see that there are some single people who feel that they must be in a relationship sharp if not the world has ended so this person comes along you have not even processed the situation you have not prayed nothing you are already saying let's get let's let's go ahead because somehow your identity is based on having a relationship. Please listen to me. You will make up your mind that my identity is not going to be based on somebody else. Amen. Amen. And I keep saying this and I will say it again. If you are a lonely single person, I will assure you that you are going to be a lonely married person because marriage does not cure loneliness am i talking to you marriage does not cure loneliness so you say, i'm so lonely when i get married you know what you are saying to yourself that it is my partner that is going to make me happy but a person who is living a word centered life is not depending on another person to make he, himself happy Am I making sense? See, I don't depend on my husband to make me happy. Only one person can make me happy. And that person is Christ, the word of God. If you are depending on your wife to make you happy, you lost it a thousand years ago. Does that mean that I'm not going to do everything to make my husband happy? Of course I would. And is he not supposed to do everything to make me happy? Or of course he should. But my true happiness is not dependent on another person. I told you the story of the other day. One, all these people, they call celebrities, Hollywood people. They invited a husband and wife to a show like this. 
and they were just sitting on their own they just called this woman out of the blues put her on the spot said madam we want to ask you a question i said okay uh, does your husband make you happy and of course the husband was smiling because he knew that the wife would not bust his bubble here she would say yes she waited for a while smiled and said no and everybody like Ooh. <laughs> you said no he said let me explain if you ask me whether my husband makes me happy you are asking me a wrong question because truly my husband doesn't make me happy i am a happy person i decided to be happy before i married him amen i decided about my happiness before i married him so when i see some people who get married and they put the whole weight for their happiness on their partner and they're going to sit down and they're going to be crying oh eh, i tell you that's not the direction to go amen i said amen so that is why even before you get married you must get into this romantic relationship with jesus to the extent that you know that in the marriage i have somebody Sha. am i making sense so i'm going to enjoy my marriage regardless i'm going to enjoy my marriage regardless i'm not depending on my partner for my joy or my happiness i'm going to be happy regardless praise god young married man are you catching this eh? she before we marry not because i think i'm old. i think every day before i wake up they just make food say honey <laughs> breakfast in bed praise god i said praise god okay so number six you want a word-centered relationship don't consider anyone outside the sphere of god's word for a relationship don't consider anyone outside the circumference of god's word for a relationship don't marry somebody who doesn't love jesus like you love jesus please don't marry anyone who doesn't love jesus sometimes my heart bleeds for some people because from day one you already see that this thing will not work and you are trying to get them to see they can't see because they are just desperate they want to be married one month into the marriage they are back crying that they made a mistake i wish they had seen clearly don't marry anyone who does not love jesus like you love jesus say so we convert him you are wasting your time hello you cannot convert him i will convert her she go change in not joy make it change first don't marry anyone outside the circumference of the word of god because you cannot take somebody who doesn't honor the word of God and with that person have a word-centered relationship. The person doesn't honor the word of God. The person doesn't have regard for the word of God. The person doesn't tremble at the word of God. So on what basis now are you going to have a word-centered relationship with that person? When you tell the person, oh, see what the word of God says, I better keep Bible first, may we discuss. Say, uh -uh, you do the do of our spirituality for everything. Once somebody begins to make those kind of comments, run for your life. What did I say you should do? Run for your life. To be honest, I have seen some marriages. Eh? It's just that as a pastor, you cannot say, pack your load and go in Jesus' name. I mean, and sometimes I'm asking, did you not see these things before you decided eh, i thought he would change how can you be in courtship with a guy and no 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 let me wash you you say not just threat not threat they become action it's not a threat that is he only
<laughs> if I carry it out now, she will run away. So let me manage until... Let me tell you something. And, and, and I want you to get it and get it clear. If you are here, you are from a broken marriage. You are here, you are from a dysfunctional home. That is, you saw your father, mother always fighting and stuff like that. You are here, you are from a polygamous home like me. You are here, you are from all those kind of... You never saw a correct example of what marriage is. I beg you. Eh? Unlike every other person who may decide to be careless, you cannot afford to be careless. You must settle down and renew your mind with the word of God. Some people don't understand that many of the things you experienced as a child, when you got born again, your spirit was recreated, but your soul has not changed. That's the area of your life that is your, contains your mind. So the Bible talks about renewing your mind with the word of God. Have you noticed that many people from broken homes end up with broken homes? And some of them who are now Christians, who don't want to break their marriages, they are just struggling in the marriage. Let me tell you why. Some people will say it's generational cause. Well, if that is what you want to call it. But I know that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. So generational cause is gone. It went with the dead Vera. Amen. But let me tell you what is playing out. As you were growing up, in that circumstance of your home, there were some things that you saw that were deposited in your mind. Even though your spirit is recreated. Until you take time to use the word of God to wash that your mind and change it. You cannot be free from that thing. For those of you here who have this mindset. Let me talk to the guys first. You have this mindset if you are from Urobo, all this area. You have this mindset. Omebo Osu. I dish out the instructions. I talk, you shut up and listen and carry out. You see, you are talking from a mindset which we don't blame you for. But if you carry that mindset into marriage without changing it with the word of God, you are going to have serious issues with your marriage. You must come to the word of God and find out what does the Bible say about being a Christian husband. So you fling away those traditions that you inherited from your fathers. What does the Bible say about this? Do you know I am saddened to, to note that there are people who say they have been believers for years. They are believers though. But... Uh, when they are doing juju festival in their village, he said, I believe that thing. Church na church. Tradition na tradition. You see this deacon, we leave town and go to carry masquerade. If you grew up from that kind of home, where every small thing, they go to find out. They go to find out. You know what has happened to many people who didn't renew their mind over time? Is that now they know they cannot go to a native doctor to find out. But the devil has been very crafty. He has created a new set of native doctor in the church. They call them prophets. So what I'm asking you is, if your parents used to go to a native doctor to find out, and you that say you are born again, you are going to find out for prophet, what's the difference? Mira won't know tomorrow. You go find the button. What it cost her? When you want to live a word-centered life and have a word-centered marriage, you must allow the word of God to be the final arbiter in everything. Am I making sense? The final arbiter. One of the reasons why I was so crazy about 
getting the word of God into my system is that growing up in a polygamous home, I never wanted that. I've, no, I've known men or I've heard of men who grew up in polygamous home and they swore what they experienced. Never. Now they have married three wives. They swore it will never happen. It will never happen. You know why it's recurring? Some people may want to call it generational cause. But I want to say it's a pattern that can only be broken by the word of God. Some of them have gone for deliverances. Some of those deliverances are empty rotation around the, this thing. They're to your sheds, go home. You are still the same. Nothing has changed. What has power and capacity to break issues is the word of God. Amen. I said amen. amen. You know, there are some of you who are under those kind of mental bondages. You know, in my family, girls don't quickly get married. Or when they marry, they're not they born. And even though you are born again, somewhere, somewhere, you have gone for so many deliverances because you believe that thing. And because you believe it, it will work. It will look as if it's generational cause. The only thing that will break it is what? Is the word of God. Is the word of God. Is the word of God. I wish I had time to drive that, but let, let, let me go. So, when you are thinking of entering into a relationship, don't get into a relationship with somebody who doesn't love Jesus. But if you are already married, you are married. So, what needs to happen is, Begin to develop your love for Jesus and help that other person to develop their love for Jesus. I told you the other time that the people that got married in scriptures that we were told how they met. Where did we say they met? At the well. Jacob met his wife at the well. Moses met his wife at the well. All the people who we know how they met, they met at the well. And we said the well is very, very instructive for us to note that as a Christian, the person you must marry must have a well he's drinking from, and that well is his local church. It's his local church. You cannot want a, a Christ-centered relationship with a girl or a guy who is not committed to a local church. Somebody who goes to church once in a while is not a marriage material. When the Spirit lead me, I asked one boy one time, I said, are you born again? He said, sometimes. <laughs> I asked the girl, I said, now this is what you want marry. When you born again, they come, they go. <laughs> All right, number seven. Number seven. You want a word-centered relationship, pray and seek God's direction. Pray and seek God's direction. Please listen to me. The thing about the things of the Spirit of God is that he said, He that asketh, receive it. So pray. For those of you that are not married, pray and say, God, I want a man, I want a woman that loves Jesus. Some of you pray for men that have money. Well, it may be a good prayer. I pray for you. But pray for somebody who loves Jesus. Pray for somebody who loves the Lord with all his heart. Okay? So pray, seek God's direction. Number eight, share constantly about God. If you have finally gotten the person or you are already married, share constantly about God and the word of God. Read the Bible and Christian books and talk about those things that you read. Share constantly. Please, if you are in a relationship with somebody, maybe you know relationship can start with friendship. Eh? Somebody that you are not free to share the word of God with is a, a sign that there's, there's an issue. Because when you get married, how will you people be sharing the word of God? Even you as a Christian, please, live such a word-centered life. I enjoyed my youth service so much. I served in Kano in 1987-88. Reverend Sam Adeyemi was our president. I was assistant sister's leader. So we're in the same ESCO. And so we're living in the family house. So we stayed in the same house. And that uh, prayer, um, reading Bible all night, we're doing it as a team. We'll come to the sitting room and sit down and read Bible. It was competition. Who go first finish the Bible? So that's what we're doing. I enjoyed that year. You know why I enjoyed the year the most? My God. There was no joke we wanted to joke. When not be scripture. And, and we, we 
find a way, sir. Scripture must enter the thing. I loved it. I loved it. Maybe somebody wanted to eat. We see the bowl of ever. Oh, who art thou great mountain? Before Sam, you shall be a plague. Don't look reverend Sam. So thing like this. We used to eat that time. Praise God. Praise God. As a human being, as a Christian, please talk the word. Put it in your mouth. Not just a positive confession. No, no, no. Not just the confession of the word of God. I mean, in discussing with people, let the word of God just be flowing from you. Let it just be part of your, your life. You are in the marketplace. You will not be saying, you know some people are very stiff. When they wear that, they are blue, could skirt and uh, all those things. You know the Bible says, and nobody wants to hear them. But I mean, just natural. You know, just natural. And it's just, it's, just, it's just coming out of you, coming out of you, coming out of you. Do you know that by so doing, there are certain kind of people you naturally attract? When I hear a girl say, I don't understand what's happening to me. Everybody that I attract is either a married man or confused who just wants sex. I said, I need to understand how you are living. When I started working as a single girl, the first day I arrived in my office, I had a big Bible. I put that for my table. <laughs> Once there is break, I open my Bible and they read. Years after I got married, one of my colleagues called me and said, ah, This woman, that time you take Bible terrorize us, so fear not, let us try. I said, Try what? Try what? And that time in PTI, our students used to be elderly, older guys, not children, because they were NNPC workers. Those were the people who were training at that time, they were coming from industry. After I married many years, I saw one of them in one restaurant. So I smiled and greeted him. He said, Hey, so you have a smile. I said, What do you mean? He said, That time, the way you're serious, we're not your attempt. I said, Attempt what? Listen to me. Flies cannot perch on a hot stove. So if you keep attracting crazy people, I want to understand how you are living your life. <laughs> no, to be honest. I want to understand how you are living your life. The church is not for Sunday morning. Sunday morning, hello. Each and every day that the Lord has made. Why are you laughing at me now? Is it fair? Is it fair? <laughs> now, so listen. It's not for Sunday morning alone. So, you are living the word of God. You are speaking the word of God. It's not like I'm quoting scripture, but just, it's just natural. Amen. So, so when you do get into relationship, just let the word of God just flow. Let the word of God flow. And one of the things that will help you as well is um, you will set targets if you are already in a relationship. Set targets. Like in church now, we have uh, the book of the month okay, that we are studying. It's the final quest by Rick Jonah. Okay? You read, I read. Let's discuss. What did you gain from chapter 1? What did you gain from chapter 2? By so doing, you are checking the spiritual thermometer. You are using the thermometer to check the other person's gauge where the person is at. Very important. I've seen some people after they married say, hey! This man, when they met the church for church, you know they pray. Oh. He does not pray. Brothers, listen to me. Have you seen some people praying in the church? Even you, self, a fear will catch you. Oh, riba, riba, ba, sha! <laughs> they will just hold the break. Mako, mako. Kariba, ba, 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 ba. And you will be saying, I don't start. <laughs> I don't start. Please, sisters, don't be, don't be deceived. <laughs> Brothers, <laughs> let me tell you something. One of the things you must pursue earnestly if you are thinking of having a solid marriage is nothing superficial nothing just what people can see but that together you people 
or, sorry, on your own, you are having your own personal relationship with God. You have your own time with the word of God, your, your own time. So that when you now get into a relationship, it's easy to share with the other person. Let me quickly round off. My time is finished. So I said share constantly about God. Number nine or eight, be nine, okay? Be actively engaged in your local church. Be actively engaged. If you want a word-centered relationship, you must be actively engaged in your local church. Psalm 92 verse 13. Be actively engaged in your local church. Please, if you are here this evening and you are not engaged in your local church, I can tell you straight away that you are doing a very wrong thing. You are in your church. You are not serving in any department. You are not doing anything. You just go to church, close and go home. You are doing a very, very wrong thing. You are not adding to God's economy. You are doing a very wrong thing. Look at it. Please, everybody, can we read? Who are those that will flourish? Those that are planted in the house of God. Those that are planted in the house of God. Please, I don't want you to be a spectator in the house of God. Make up your mind. I'm going to be actively engaged. Engaged. This year, 2019, engaged. And if there's, I don't know if your pastor told you, if you are not a member of Morningstar, please, this year, what God is saying is that it must be an active year for soul winning. An active year of soul winning. Do you know that when you are involved in those kind of things, the kind of people you will attract, they are going to be the correct people. And if you are married, and you are actively engaged in the work of God, you know that when you get home, and the devil wanted to stage a quarrel between you and your wife or husband, do you have time to quarrel now? No, because that person you preach to, you want to pray for the person. So this kind of quarrel, I don't have... Okay, imagine me now. Do I have time for quarrel now? Where do I have time to quarrel the quarrel? Eh? No, show me the time for the quarrel. This whole weekend I have been preaching. This coming week I'm going to be preaching. Which time do I have for quarrel? When I go to my class to teach, in front of my student, I'm going to be preaching. I'm going to be preaching. So what time do I have for quarrel? So that is to say that if you are not actively engaged, you know the, normal, uh, the, the quotation, the idle mind is what? The devil's workshop. I want to pray for you people before we go. I really want to pray for you, each one of you, especially those of you that are single. I want to pray for you. This year, this year, let me not go ahead of myself so that you will wait for the prayer. Praise God. Alright, so the next one, avoid physical affection. Avoid physical affection if you are not yet married. If you want a Christ, a world-centered relationship, just as the drama depicted, avoid physical attention, uh, affection. Don't, eh, eh, let's just be kissing small, small. Don't! Don't go there. Take it from a mama. Don't go there. He said, but what is wrong with a little kissing? A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. In Abraka, when I started schooling in Abraka, my auntie called me and said, I no one here with my ear. I said, you go Abraka River. Go swim. I said, yes, ma'am. But if you ever schooled in Abraka, you know there were times that there was no water. So we have to go to the river. Because of that advice, when I go and fetch my water, if you see where we carry my bucket to be washing my clothes, when my people are jumping and swimming, you never catch me there. All the years, the four years I was in Abraka, there was no year that people did not die in that river and they were usually students. Because you see, the river is one kind of river. As you are looking at it, so it looks very clear. As you are going, it's clear. But one step, the gradient is so deep if you don't know how to swim you are gone and it is a swift moving tide many times they go and drag people from under root of trees where they have died why am i saying that river when one drown person there eh? the person doesn't go to say i want to drown i want to drown now play 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 now they turn to eat and go I know you didn't know where that story was going. That is to say, 
You are going to have physical intimacy all the years of your married life. I've been married 30 years or almost 30 years. Nobody stops us from doing anything we want to do. Why ruin the foundation of what you are trying to build by five minutes of pleasure? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If you ever get into a relationship with somebody who says, if you don't have sex with me, the relationship is over, let it be over. I'm telling you, it's better for your life. I wish you would listen to me. It's better for your life. That person doesn't deserve you. And if you are a brother and you are planning to get married, don't even contemplate it. Don't let it enter your thoughts for one second. Don't think about it. Have a clean relationship. Plan your marriage. Get married and enjoy all the sex happily ever after. Say amen. Okay, so don't get physically involved. And finally, finally, actively pursue God's purpose for your life. You want a world-centered relationship? Actively pursue God's purpose for your life. This is 2019. You are going to make up your mind that, see, God has a purpose for my life and I'm going to actively pursue it. Marriage is wonderful. Eh? But Jesus was not married. He fulfilled his purpose in life. Am I right? So, I am going to actively pursue God's purpose for my life. So that is to say this year, there are some of you who, needs to go, who need to go back, maybe to do a program, maybe a master's program, if that's part of God's plan. Some of you need to actively do things in your life. Sisters, don't put your life on hold while you are waiting for Mr. Wright to come. Go on! Go on with your life. There are some of you who have businesses in your spirit. Go on with your life. Don't sit down as if to say, unless marriage happens, my, my, the die is cast. No. Go on with your life. Actively pursue the purpose of God for your life. What are the things I need to do this year, 2019? What are the uh, 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 books I need to read? The challenges I need to, to, to scale in terms of my purpose. What are the things I need to make ready? Please actively do that this year. I don't want you to... <laughs> If somebody posted something on uh, one of my WhatsApp uh, group chats. It was about uh, four pilots, all white girls. Four of them, white girls. And the person posted under. He said, see white girls, they do something with their life. Nigerian girls, they church, they pray for husband. I was irritated. And I believe it's a, a boy that wrote that thing. <laughs> Please listen to me. Please listen to me. There is a lot to do with your life. Amen. There is a lot to do with your life. Go on with your life. And I believe that as you engage God, as you engage your purpose and destiny in life, marriage will, have, will meet you on the way. Amen. And I believe God for you this year. Praise the Lord. The Lord will direct your path. The Lord will direct your steps. In the name of Jesus. Let's all stand on our feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you. Pastor Vera Oroba has just placed in your hands the key to all round abundance and unlimited life in Christ. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Come worship with us at Morning Star Christian Center, Ephraim. God bless you.